Hello everyone, we're back with another Patreon review. We took uh, a little bit of time off of that for about 45 days or so because uh, we mainly had to promote the, the Indiegogo campaign and uh, that'll be over with by the time that this airs. So we got to our next uh, movie that was from one of the top subscribers on Patreon. If you want to subscribe to that, that's at patreon.com slash the cinema snob. And if you're at the top tier on there, you uh, can recommend uh, midnight screenings episodes to watch. So the next one that was on the list was from Kelly Davis. So thank you very much, Kelly, for <laughs> recommending to us Maximum Risk. Have you ever heard of this film? Maximum Ride, I thought. Maximum Ride. No, yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme's Maximum Ride. <laughs> well, because... No, uh, Maximum Ride. I was trying through the, the entire movie to figure out why it was called that, and my best guess was since the main character's name was Max, it's maybe her, her full, full name. name is Maximum yeah. Ride. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard of this movie before a day in my life. Neither have I. I... This is a YA film from 2016, and I was doing some reading about the, the book series that it's based on. Based on a book books, series. Right? Yeah, and they're very, very successful. James Patterson is the writer on them. And for this, this movie adaptation was in kind of limbo for a while. It went through a lot of rough pre-production. They spent a lot of years trying to get an adaptation of this series to uh, to screen because there is a pretty devoted following to these books. The books appear to have pretty good reviews, and there's a big YouTube base for the books as well. Mm -hmm. So this movie, at one point, uh, like it had some of the producers of Spider Man behind it. It had uh, Catherine Hardwick. Hardwick was set to direct it at one point. I don't know who that is. She directed Twilight. Okay. Uh, she was set to direct this at one point. Uh, it, and then it had uh, the writer of uh, Thor, and he was also a writer on The Simpsons. He was attached to this at one point but passed away mm. and so it, it oh. kind of it kind of went into some legal issues after that i think and just uh, after just a series of stuff now here was this version of the movie that came out in 2016 which is only the first half of the first book mm -hmm. <laughs> so usually they get to new york in the first book uh, apparently according to what i was reading this is just the first half of the first book now no now that is something different normally they wait until the last book to do that <laughs> this one no we're setting a new trend we're doing that first we know exactly what we're doing we know what we're doing and this movie had a sign Simultaneous release to video on demand and theatrical, which I cannot imagine how many theaters this was in, in 2016, in like August or September of 2016. I never heard of this fucking movie before. I, I never. It's been made more than $128. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Billionaire Boys Club was pretty bad, but it was it's better than this film. <laughs> It's, it's it's a lot better than this film. The gauntlet has been thrown. This movie looked like... I, this movie is so cheap and so bad looking. It looks like an asylum movie. It looks like, like... a very prettily cast asylum movie. It looks like a TV pilot. Uh -huh. It looks, it I looks like, like a... Dark Angel maybe? Or... Yeah, or that like Beauty and the Beast series that they just did uh -huh. where like it was a fucking Buffy. procedural. Yeah, Ooh, or like... So much CGI money to throw around. A pilot for like a YouTube Red series or something like that. This movie is so cheap that it makes me think slightly more fondly on the fifth wave and uh, uh -huh. the darkest minds that just came out as bad as those were mm -hmm. I'm now like okay the fifth wave and darkest minds were really bad but now after looking at this I'm like well, they could have been worse. They could have looked a lot cheaper. <laughs> and I mean, like, if there was a hidden gem hidden under all that cheapness, I could see trying to mm -hmm. you know, advocate for it. But it was just trite and heavy-handed with, like, 
the YA tropes. There's a lot of like, we have to find out who we are and you can't tell me what mm -hmm. to do. And I don't think we should trust him. We should totally trust him, but we shouldn't trust him. Wink. Yeah, it's it's one of those adaptations where even though I know nothing about the book, I can tell there's shit missing. <laughs> because this, the plot of this movie is that there's a science lab called The School, because it's one of those movies that has cute names like that. The science lab building is called The School. The house that the, they're staying in is called The, the Nest. Nest. Uh, the hunter, the wolf hunters who are after them are called The Erasers. I kept waiting for them to eat dinner, and it's like the restaurant. <laughs> and so they they are these te these kids and teens who have been... They're test tube babies who have been maybe possibly crossbred with avian DNA. So they have angel wings and they, they have angel wings and they're kept in cages and they're being tested on by scientists. But then the guy who is like their savior takes Jeb. Jeb, who takes like six of them. He's the Sean Bean of this movie. And that a, he looks a little like Sean Bean and two, gee, I wonder if the mysterious adult figure who is not showing is going to turn out to be the only other adult figure in this fucking movie. Yeah, we called it like, it's like, oh, hey, there's Sean Bean again. But then at the same time, I was like, well, I was fooled slightly with just getting started when there was a mysterious figure, and then it turned out to be nobody. Some random guy. Yeah, so maybe this one's doing the same thing. Nope, guy who looks kind of like Sean Bean is the Sean Bean of this film. Well, so, well, later we had a shadowy figure that turned out to be, we still have no idea because they never showed her face. We'll find out in the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> I can't the, wait. Yeah, and, and, and so, like, there are these teens that have been living in a house for years, away from, like, the wolf creatures who are chasing them, and the lead, the lead wolf creature is just, is played by an actor that looks like the only two things he could play are wolf people or cavemen. <laughs> like one, one of the two. Uh, he, he looks like he, I, this guy might be on Teen Wolf. I don't know, but I mean, he looks like he could be. And so he's he he's the son of the scientist who helped them escape. So no, Jeb, because the well, they were staying in the school, and then. Um, she cut the sun and yeah. then, then she got put in the cage and the scientist broke them out and told, like drove them to a house and just said just, you guys just stay in this house mm -hmm. this is your house now and they're like okay and then like 15 years later, some of the kids are like, we'd like to not be in the house anymore. We won't be in the house anymore. They have... We'd lead bird ladies like, no, we stay in this house forever. Yeah, they. a lot of them are having just like really, we're watching, for the first 20 minutes, we're watching them have really petty arguments with each other in the house. It's mostly as about if... how some of them don't want to be in the house anymore. Yeah. Some of them are super into being in the house. Right. Yeah, she doesn't speak for us. <laughs> I'm like, it. It's like watching just some clicks at a fucking school, only if there were six of them. And then there's the one kid who's the Danny Bonaducci of the movie. <laughs> the who, bombs McGee. Yeah, who's like, man, they won't let me make my pipe bombs at the breakfast table. Gazzy. You stop making the pipe... Yeah, his name is Gazzy. <laughs> uh, his name's Gazzy. There's a character named Nudge. There's, there's Gazzy, Nudge, Angel, Be Iggy, Max... And love interest. And the girl named Angel is one of the youngest ones. Yeah, so she's like, basically the psychic girl from Hellraiser 3. Why did they wait so long to name one of these angel people Angel? <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting for a blonde one who wasn't grumpy. Yeah, yeah. And the way that they dress... You can tell the way that they dress in this is... Whoever was the costume designer or producer of this film, mm -hmm. or probably the producer, whoever's the producer of this film, was like, "Punk rock. We need, we need to create a look that, like, man, kids are going to be dressing like the characters from this film. So they're wearing like ripped t-shirts." punk gloves for no reason they're they're dressed like people who have just discovered blondie but are just but are still saying they're my favorite band of all time and it was such bullshit because there's a point where max had to wear a shirt and she's like they had a back to it whoops mm -hmm. and she's like oh this will not do and she like cut, cut out the back of it as if you know um oh it's you know it's all ripped up for practical purposes so that her wings can get out easily yeah. which needs to take flight all of a sudden the rest of them were in like hooded sweatshirts yeah like a all jean sleeveless like all like fucking sleeveless like 
I well, have, I feel their outfits like you, you couldn't get wings out of that thing if you had 15 minutes in a changing room. They're all dressed like a 90s cover band we would probably see in downtown Springfield playing mm -hmm. at the Soho Music Festival. Yeah. <laughs> like all sleeveless, all different ages wearing ripped shirts and shit. Like no one's, you're not fooling me. I'm not going to dress like these people. <laughs> <laughs> they have a kick and vinyl collection at their house. I'll bet. And uh, so... Really, the, the the funniest parts of the movie and the cheapest parts of the movie are when the, they take off. When they take when their wings, they sprout out angel wings that looks like if they just tinted this gold, it would look like gods of Egypt. Like it's every special effect in this movie is lingered on. Like they're really so proud of this. It's it like looked the Metatron and Dogma. <laughs> it yeah, like it they the special effects look like. This was the test effects, and that's what they released. Yeah, Every single one of go them. With it. Yeah, it looks like it would be serviceable for a music video because mm -hmm. this movie is from a music video director. It looks like yeah, if it's a bunch of quick cuts in, you said like an Evan F Essence music video, which is really kind of how this movie is shot. Uh -huh. uh, that yeah, that would probably look passable in a four-minute video, but in a movie like this, when it just looks like you're watching a pilot that did not get picked up with a effects that were not finished yep. and like wait a minute you released that Th those effects weren't finished oh, they, no. oh shit like they haven't even been fully rendered yet what the fuck are you doing that's what every effect in this movie is like and they <laughs> linger on that shit and what bless you and they even they even have the balls to put in a sound alike to Danny Elfman's Batman theme when they're flying in one I scene. I wonder which like, song of the two that there were. Yeah, oh yeah, the soundtrack listing at the end yeah, that only lists there's two like, songs. Amen and Pink Lady. Sort of Batman theme on there. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it's the special effects are. <laughs> they are the funniest part of this movie, but it doesn't make <laughs> the movie worth watching. When they're just flying around and standing in front of this green screen with this purple background and everything is shaking it just looks like it doesn't it doesn't look like there's any kind of earthquake or the building is shaking it just looks like the effects are glitching yeah <laughs> there's a scene where she wakes up in some little girl's bedroom and i swear to god i got that like double vision for a second yeah it's it's one of those films where you just know it's going to sequel bait at the end of it. And, and it, lo it did. And lo and behold, it does. <laughs> and you can tell exactly when it's going to happen. When they're saying, wait a minute, my dreams are telling me to go to New York. Time you know, to it, go to New York. We'll see you in New York. And then it, it, it ends with, like it's going to show us who the mysterious voice figure is. But then doesn't. Because we got to save something for the second half of the book movie. Then... Because it's always to the detriment of the movie, you know, if they had yeah. cut out the five billion conversations about how angsty and teenager they are, mm -hmm. they could have taken us to New York and we could have figured some shit out, but nope. Mm -hmm. I, I hope they need to just end the movie there on a conversation of a place they're planning to go. I don't understand the stakes of this movie. Like, all right, so you created bird people. Why are you being such a dick about it? <laughs> I don't. Why? I'm why sure are you being so evil? It in the fifth movie. <laughs> you've created. You've successfully created bird people. There's no reason to keep them in cages. <laughs> like the wolf creatures are far more evil than the bird people that you've created. Mm -hmm. oh, well, the bird people heal super super fast, so maybe they're planning on finding some sort of medical. Mm hmm way to utilize that but there's no reason application that's what i was looking for there's no reason to be a nazi doctor about it <laughs> i mean they kind of already are being nazi doctors about it. i think it's kind, of, it's kind of in for a penny in for a pound in terms of nazi doctor but i mean at least in their case they have successfully created bird people yeah. like so all right you've created people who, who can just sprout out wings and start flying and fight crime and do the superhero pose like you don't have to be like a, a dick cheese about the whole thing. <laughs>
It doesn't make any, I don't know. I'm sure the books are better. I'm sure they'd have to be. I can't think about Nazi doctors too hard because I start getting bummed out. <laughs> they're, they're, well, it's a good thing they did. I guess some pretty awful stuff. I guess it's a good thing the Patreon request wasn't like fucking men behind the sun or some shit. So the one where it's just like two gay guys in a cage knitting because that oh, shit no. didn't happen. No, that was uh, violence in a women's prison. Uh -huh. uh, or wait, what? No, that was, was it? No, uh, that. With the men knitting. That Ilsa She Wolf of the SS? No, no, no. That was uh, Women's Camp 119. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because that was one of Bruno Mattei's Nazi movies. Mm -hmm. SS Girls was the far superior one. If only they just made them knit. <laughs> I don't know. Dave and I went to go see Death of a Nation, and that movie said Hitler was cool with the gays. <laughs> I wish I was joking. That's, I'm actually being... <laughs> what a horrible thing to laugh at. No, he super wasn't. He I don't know. like a bunch of them. I don't know. The movie that Dave and I went to go see. <laughs> the the hundred-year-old people in the theater were eating it up. Dinesh D'Souza. D'Souza? D'Souza. Dinesh D'Souza. Please, get it right. can fuck himself so hard he becomes a singularity. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> That's a different video. Yeah, Maximum Ride was better than that movie. I, I would imagine. <laughs> for, for that matter, so was Women's Camp 119. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, I don't know what else to say about this. This movie was only 86 minutes long. Uh, I, I feel like I'm forgetting stuff about this movie, but... I don't think I am. It's a super low... Like, I feel... I genuinely feel bad for all of the people who are fans of this book series. Because, <laughs> like... It would have been better to just not make the fucking movie than to put this shit out there. This feels like... Like, at one point, it sounded like there was a lot of money and ambition behind making a solid adaptation of this. Where it ended up with this just feels like we made this movie because we could, <laughs> not because they like wanted... we went through all the trouble. And we like we had like all these people lined up. We might as well just go ahead and make it. That's what this movie feels like. It just feels like they just had to make it, so they just shit out this product mm -hmm. with the worst special effects that they could fucking think of, that they could put together. I can't imagine what it would, would be like watching this on a big screen, <laughs> watching this in the theater. Or, well, I guess I kind of can. I saw, I've, I've seen some shit in the theater. Uh, like, between Dance and It's On and that Inhumans pilot that we went to go see. <laughs> I saw that on an IMAX. That was weird. <laughs> uh, so, this movie's not very good. It's not very good. I wouldn't recommend it. Thank you for having us watch it, I guess, because we were, we were at least a little entertained by the uh, special effects. Yeah, the special effects in it were really, really entertaining, and the line delivery is all really bad in it, because it's, it's oddly edited. It's edited in a way that a conversation is going on, and everyone's already kind of monotone to begin with in the movie. Like, about the most petty shit, like, the bad guy offers her cookies, and she's like, I don't like cookies anymore. I'm an adult now. And so I've outgrown them. I've outgrown them. He's like, them. no, but I wrote a message on the cookies. No, and just look at this was like, thing. Trust me. Just look at the message that I put you in the cookies. Ah, whatever. Go into my room. So it's all kind of flat and monotone to begin with, but it feels like each line starts. Sorry, and, oh, no problem. Starts and stops where they should have maybe clipped a second before or after each cut. Mm -hmm. So, like, the converse, it's like, hey, Hi, how you doing? Not good. Like it's <laughs> like there's just a second too much between each line at the beginning and end of each take. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe that could be just to get the movie to 86 minutes. Yeah, I'm sure they just they because there was not very much interesting things for these that these characters had to say, and I yeah. feel like that's something you'd be more sensitive to since you're pretty you're really good at editing. And I like, thank you. Well, you <laughs> you're an excellent editor, and it's like it, it's something that you notice. And anything that like you're in charge of editing is how natural it feels. And right. Like, um, I know when you're editing something I've been in, I, I trust you not to like leave me those gaps so I look like a doofus. <laughs> uh, I don't tend to notice that crap. I just notice that something is wrong. 
wrong. Yo, right. Like something just feels wrong. It yeah. feels off. <laughs> yeah, this this movie just feels like a prototype of a movie. It mm -hmm. feel it really feels like we are watching an assembly cut of this <laughs> film. Like just the cut that just the the backers watch to be like, oh, like hey, I want this change, this change, this team change. And then they ran out of time. Boom. Let's put this shit on on demand. 86 minutes? Sure, that's fine. Yeah, so I uh anyway. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kelly Davis, for the uh, uh, donation to, to Patreon and the contribution. And uh, I don't know if this is a situation where they like this movie, but probably not. This, probably not. This feels like... This is like a Misery Loves Company. I'm like, this is like, entertainingly bad. Yeah. I, but I, thank you. I think, that's, I think that's what this is. Thank you for your donation. Do you remember in Wishmaster... Um, do you remember the movie Wishmaster? Yeah, oh, hell yeah. You yeah. remember that prisoner guy, like, wished that his lawyer would go fuck himself? And, like, the lawyer, like, snapped in half and did that. Yeah. He was like, ah! He, like, to, to stick his head up his ass or something like that? It was, that's where he goes, like, his, his torso, like, bent in half yeah. so that his dick could go in his butt. <laughs> that's how Dinesh DeSalza can go fuck himself. <laughs> Yeah, Dinesh's effects are only slightly better than the special effects <laughs> in this film. <laughs> All Bye. right, see you guys.